Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. And we're back in the fish room, as you can see. We're doing more jobs. Always jobs to do in the fish room. But today, I want to talk a little bit about live food. But when I talk about live food, I don't mean feeding live fish. Feeder fish is a whole different subject. And let's just draw a line on that and say, no, not into that at all. Probably a whole video in and of itself, but this is more about live foods. So we've got things like worms, crickets, locusts, brain shrimp, snails. What else might I be forgetting? I don't know. Let me know in the comments what live foods are you using, but I'll show you what ones I'm using. Cause we've got a new toy, if you can see it there. And I want to show it off. This is the Zis Artema Blender. Uh, that's what they call it, but it's basically a brain shrimp hatchery. It's very kindly provided to me by VM Aquatics. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about them later. You may recognise this if you're familiar with YouTube videos about fishy things, because this is the one Aquarium Co-op sells in the US. Um, by all reports, it's very good. I've never had this myself though. This has always been something that I've done DIY. So this is my first proper uh, brine shrimp hatchery. Um, it's ready to harvest now, so I've just turned off the air. First impressions, it's great. Yeah, I mean, it's so much better. Every, every review I've seen of this, has said they have a problem with the stand. I haven't figured out why yet, because it seems fine, but the way it works is it does come with a handle, so you can hang it on things. So I've seen a few people have made little brackets and attached them to the wall and hung them that way. That might be more convenient, and probably is more convenient, but I haven't done that yet. The stand seems fine, it's just obviously you need to find a place to stand it. Um, comes with everything you need. They've also supplied me with this little sieve, which is quite fantastic. I really like this. Um, that'll make the harvesting a bit easier. But in terms of using it, it couldn't be more simple. Uh, it even comes with a, a little thermometer to check the temperature. So I'm heating the fish room rather than heating individual tanks. So it's warm enough in here, I think, for the brine shrimp. Um, it comes with a, a little hole here, so you can put a heater in if it isn't warm enough for you. And then obviously, it, Got an attachment for your air line. So everything this side of the lid you have to provide. So you need an air pump or an air line. Uh, but inside there's even an air line which is stiff, which is really good because if you don't have a stiff one, <laughs> sorry, if you don't have a stiff one they can quite often get tangled. But this one is perfect size, little diffuser at the bottom which goes right to the bottom. Turn the air on and it swills your brown shrimp eggs around. My general approach to this is I have normal water, so I just run water out of my HMA filter, the same water I would do water changes with. Uh, this is a two litre bottle, so I've got some plain old rock salt um, bought from the supermarket, smash that up into powder. I do a tablespoon per 500 mils, so two litres, four tablespoons. Um, stick in the air line, let that run for kind of 10 minutes, maybe something like that, till it clears up and the salt's dissolved. And then I put in maybe half a tablespoon, if that, of the actual brown shrimp eggs. Leave that for kind of 24, 36 hours. There's a sweet spot in there, but you'll need to figure it out yourself if you want to do this. Um, because it depends on your water quality, your water hardness, the temperature you're running at. Uh, all, all these things affect where that sweet spot of when you should harvest might be. But generally, if you stop it, it's a good idea to get a light and shine a light down at the bottom because it makes all the live shrimp go towards the light. And then all the, the shells and everything get a chance to rise to the top. So you see this scummy bit at the top here. That's all your either unhatched or shells of the brine shrimp. And then down here, there's just this big swill of the brine shrimp that are hatched. It's flying around. So the eggs themselves, uh, again VM Aquatics sent me the eggs uh, and this is the reason they reached out to me. So they used to do this and this was quite a popular listing they had on their eBay store. Um, they, they sold these but they were from Russia so for obvious reasons they were unable to maintain that supply so they had to go away and find a new supplier so they've got these from the Great Lake. Um, Again, I've only just tried these, so we'll see what kind of hatch rate we get out of these. But unfortunately, that meant that they had to relist everything. So, because it's technically a new listing, they lost all their good reviews. So, they reached out to me, and I will put a link in the description to their store. It will be an affiliate link, so I will get a small commission on anything you purchase. But there's a bunch of um, goodies on there. So, they've got some discounts running, some offers, some specials. Just 
go and have a look if you have used them in the past. If you're in the UK, you may well have used them in the past without knowing. I, I did. Um, I think I bought some plants off them in the past. Um, but I've had a few reports from subscribers. We've talked about it in the live stream who said, yeah, they've used them. No problems. Customer service is good and all that kind of stuff. So definitely worth checking them out. The brown shrimp eggs I keep, so my fish room is behind that curtain there. I keep them outside because these prefer to be kept cooler, so I keep them out in the, the front of the garage where it is a bit cooler. Um, and then, like I say, a teaspoon, if that, of these makes a good batch for me to feed. So when it comes time to harvest them, I have a very temporary situation here. Having a light at the bottom makes all the live brown shrimp go down, attracted to the light and it makes it a bit of a, an easier harvest for you. So we'll do that for a couple of minutes while I tell you about the rest of the foods I feed and why. So what makes live food so good? Why am I so interested in it? I just think it's a great food for your fish. Um, I'm not just cultivating it for fry, so I do want to get into more breeding projects, but I also have a few finicky fish around here that have more of a specialized diet, like pea puffers, for instance. They're, they're quite finicky and picky, and if you want to give them a balanced diet, you need to have a few different foods on the go. Um, but I also don't just feed it to small fish and to um, fry and things like that. If the brown shrimp, for instance, I, I feed that to all my fish. All my fish love it. And I work on the principle, I have no scientific evidence for this, but I work on the principle that if the fish see there's lots of food around that will feed their fry, they're more likely to breed. Don't know whether it's true. I can't remember who told me that, but it seems to work. Um, certainly getting things there's a thing called getting fish into breeding condition and one of the things you do is you feed them lots of live foods um, and it's certainly i've had good results with it so i tend to go with it so the brine shrimp will go to all the fish um, and to be fair i always say well i've not met a fish that doesn't like bloodworms bloodworms are great but they're not very nutritional i've certainly never met a fish that doesn't like baby brine shrimp um, so while that's doing there, I'll show you a few of the others that I've got going. So first, something that you might not normally consider as a fish food. So we've got some locusts here. These are from my local pits at home. I have these because I have lizards upstairs. We've got some um, leopard geckos. These are fifth hoppers, but I always get um, a pack of three, two for the geckos and one for me. Um, bigger fish. Eat these and these are great because you can gut load these with lots of goodness of so I always like bits of carrot or cucumber or some kind of vegetation in there you can also put in some vitamin powders cover them with, with that kind of thing and then these ones specifically go to one very special fish Mr Humphrey so we'll feed him a couple of these in a minute I don't recommend these for most fish because they are quite big obviously but things like little tiny crickets pinhead crickets that's good for small puffers and things like that um, Roaches again can be good for other puffers and things like that. All readily available at your local pets at home or reptile shop or things like that. Um, really good food because um, you can pack them full of whatever you want. So if you think your fish are lacking in one particular additive, add it. Dust these off with it. Um, I use these because Humphrey, he'll just attack anything. Whatever you put in your tank, whether it's your finger or a cricket or a locust or whatever, he's going to have some of that. Similarly, I use mealworms, um, again, this is something that's easy to keep going for a long time. So the crickets and the locusts are more of a, you buy a tub, you use a tub. I think I've had this tub of mealworms going for a couple of months now. Um, just every now and again, chuck in something so there's a bit of carrot in there. You can see with all the mealworms all over it. And these are fantastic food for a lot of things. There's, there are some fish that apparently will struggle uh, with the exoskeleton of the mealworm. So you might want to make sure you're using a balanced diet. But again, Humphrey eats these, the snakeheads eat these. Um, most fish will have a go at them. Very good fish. Very good fish. Very good food. And then I've got three sets of worms to show you that I'm currently cultivating. So in this tub, this is my white worm culture. Well, this is the Grindle worms. Um, again, something you can keep going for as long as you want. Basically, you have some soil. You need a starter culture, obviously, to get you going. But once it's going, don't smell too bad. Once it's going, you can keep going forever. And then you get this kind of thing. These worms, again, pea puffers. All fish really will absolutely devour these and again really nutritious a lot better than bloodworms things like that 
um, easy to feed. When I first got this culture, it came with a load of actual food, but in the olden days, used to just stick in like a bit of bread, something like that. And that would keep that going. So again, it hasn't broken, so I haven't tried to fix it. I've just kept going with the food that they gave me originally. This one, this is my generic white worm culture. I have no idea what kind of worms these are. I've had this going for so long, I can no longer remember, but these are proper micro worms. Again, if you can see them, tiny, tiny, tiny little worms. Really only good for fry. Even the pea puffers are a bit like, where did that go? Um, but such a simple thing to keep going. Like you can see in there, just around the edge, you can just dollop some of that out, start a new culture and keep this going almost perpetually. This one's starting to smell a bit vinegary, so I probably need to break that up and start a new culture with that one. But these are like single outlay things. You buy them once and it keeps you going for weeks, if not months, if not forever, if you can keep it going forever. In theory, with one starter culture, any kind of worms, you can just keep that going as long as you maintain the culture pretty well. And then the final type is earthworms. So I've shown you that before. I've got my earthworm um, box, I guess I call it. Again, just leave that in there. The good thing about that is if you get that going and established, you get lots of different sizes of worms. So you get small little baby worms up to the big fat juicy ones. So depending on which fish you're trying to feed, you can usually find something that actually works quite well and you don't have to do the gruesome task of chopping up worms. Obviously, there's other types of live food like Daphnia, like uh, black worms, which are all fantastic. I just don't actually have any of them at the moment. I tend to just buy them in single use packets rather than trying to cultivate them. That will be a project for the future. So if you're interested in that, let me know and let me know some tips about how you do it down in the links down, links down below, down in the comments down below. My goal here is to get things into breeding condition. So I'm starting to try and feed things up, make them happy that there's lots of fry ready foods around. So the first step, I guess, is to harvest this brain shrimp. So let's have a go at that. So I'm not sure how well that's coming across on camera, but we've got the light down there at the bottom. And you can see all the baby brain shrimp swimming around trying to get down to it. So with the this uh, thing, it's basically a tap here with a little screw, unscrew that, everything comes out there, we'll run it through the sieve and catch the baby brain shrimp. So I guess, let's try that. I'm now beginning to realise why people might not like the stand quite so much. If I want to run that off anywhere, it's kind of coming out in the middle of the stand. I, I need to run a little bit of hose or pipe to get it to come out over the edge. So I'll just have to do it kind of like don't know how I'm going to do that. Might need a little bit of pipe or just hold it, I guess. Hmm. Okay, new solution. We've moved to the side of this tank. With the stand on, couldn't really get the bucket under it or get it to go over the edge of anything, so it is what it is. So there's two methods that I've generally used for this, but we've got the sieve, so we're going to use it. The other one would just be to put this into some kind of container, let it run, and then use a pipette to... Psh, 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 psh. Some people moan that you're putting dirty water or salt-filled water into um, freshwater aquariums, but with the, the amounts that we're talking about, I've never seen it as a problem before. So basically, just let that run down. What we don't want to do is get to the point where we've got all the scum at the top. We just want to collect the live brain shrimp. And generally, all the live ones should be down at the bottom.
So there, fed a few of my more finicky eaters, giving everyone a taste of the smaller foods as well. I just really think that live foods are a, a great thing to be feeding. Dry foods are obviously more convenient, easier to keep, easier to store, all that kind of thing. But if you if you can keep some live foods, the benefits are just great, I think. So loving the Zis filter. Thank you very much, VM Aquatics. Zis filter, Zis hatchery. Uh, I'm going to get another one going, see if I can start to dial in my settings. So two litres, four drops of salt. This is just rock salt. They always say don't use table salt, but I have used table salt quite successfully in the past. Just try to get the one without the anti-caking agents. And you should be good to go. Uh, find the lid. Stick that on again and we're good to go. I always like to set the bubbles quite high when I first start it off so it helps mix the salt a bit quicker. So leave that for five minutes, go and get the brown shrimp eggs, add them and start the cycle all over again. So it's all pretty much mixed in now so it's time to add the brown shrimp. I just turn the air down to a, a rolling a rolling bubble. We just want to move the eggs around, we don't want to make them seasick. Um, quite like that these come in a little black bag because these are affected by light and um, the eggs themselves so I can just keep that cool and we should this should last a long long time and um, so I'm basically just going for like maybe quarter third half a teaspoon tablespoon call it what you will that much I'm just trying to dial in my yield to see what kind of mix I get so probably give it a little bit longer this time, maybe a little bit warmer. I am heating the fish room rather than the individual tanks, but it might be a little bit cool for them. So we'll see how we get on. But thank you once again to VM Aquatics for sending me this stuff. If you want to go and check it out, there will be a link in the description. Um, not only do they sell this kind of stuff, they've got all kinds of things on the website. There's some discounted goods on there as well at the moment, so by all means go and check all that out. Sounds like it's run with a hobbyist ethos of decent products, decent prices. Um, not everything on there is the best or the most expensive. It's about, I think when I had a chat with them, it was about things that they would use themselves, which is very much what I do. So when you buy the fish food from me, it's the fish food that I use myself. Um, so I like that kind of mentality. So go and check them out and see if there's anything that takes your fancy. Um, supporting a small independent business, always good stuff. So I hope you found something useful there. Obviously just covered the foods that I'm currently feeding at the moment, but there's all sorts of live foods out there, which are, most of them I think are great. Um, snails is another one that, that I think is a really good, underrated, easy food to feed for most fish that will enjoy that. It's not just for your puffer fish. Uh, and that, that can be aquatic snails and it can be terrestrial snails. I've even bought the old escargot off of eBay and I kept a little container full of them to keep them going and feeding the babies to the fish. Really good, nutritious food. So whether it is something you're doing just to get things into breeding condition, whether it's something to get fish, uh, finicky eaters to eat something, or just for nutritional value, the live foods can be a great way to go. So let me know in the comments, what are you using? What kind of foods are you feeding your fish? What else might I try out? What would you like to see? Um, is there things you're interested in trying but aren't sure how to do it? Maybe we can learn together. As always, uh, join us on a Friday night, 9pm UK time. We do the live stream. Um, come and ask us any questions there on any topics, anything you want to do. Uh, but thanks for watching, and remember to click all the clicky things. If there's a thing to click, click it. Click, click, click. Thank you. Bye.